way. This is gonna suck. Wait for it. Wait for yeah, it. That's all water. Good, beautiful morning, everyone. It is January 1st, 2024, and we are getting us a new dozer. We've got the skid steer loaded up with the bucket and forks. Got us a kitty cat sending us off. New Holland C227. We're all loaded up. We are headed over to Freedom, Indiana. Let's roll. We are really, really out in the sticks. We've been on a gravel road for probably a mile. What I am very curious about is if the 310G that I am restoring came from this same area. I want to say it was Linton, Indiana is where I got it from. And we got off at the Brazil exit and we took 59 south and the sign said Linton. So this very well could have came from the same dealership. Uh, and then I also ran across the guy that I've talked to on Facebook that operates a big drag line over here in Indiana. And I drove right past his driveway and he has these huge, huge drag line chains welded solid as uh, driveway posts. That was really cool. He's got uh, smaller drag lines, drag line bucket, and uh, dozer that I saw it was pretty cool. So it's always interesting. You're just driving around out here and you run into people you've talked to. I was like, I've talked to that guy. It was crazy. But we're almost there. We'll check back in. It just keeps going. We're getting more narrow by the minute. I'm sure the phone is not going to do it justice, but it is getting tight out here. Having a 32-foot trailer behind us. I'd say this is at least 17% sus. We have made it to our destination. We're in the middle of nowhere. I'm surprised we even have cell service. I'm just going to leave the truck run, I think, and we're going to walk up this hill and see if we're at the right place. Hopefully we don't get shot at. We barely made it up the hill. We are unchaining the skid steer and we will get the dozer loaded. Then once we get back to home base, then we'll do a walk around of the girl. are tied down I believe everything is secure We've got the mighty case 310 on and the New Holland 327 as well we are loaded for dog a little bit heavy now we're gonna sneak our way home we have made it to the warehouse we will simply unchain shove the unit over to the side we will have to raise the blade chain it up until we decide to do something with it and then we will hopefully lift it off with our large forklift fingers crossed let's roll
we are finally on the ground safe. It is so, so nice to have the right tool for the job. Love this old forklift. It's got like 25,000 hours on it. Just a quick inspection. I see that the oil is overfilled by quite a bit. If that will focus, clean that off. Quite a bit overfilled, so I'm going to actually crawl under it and see about cracking the drain plant drain pan, excuse me, not enough coffee this morning, cracking the drain pan nut and seeing if we can get the water that's under the oil, I assume, out. We did actually have this piece. It was tucked behind the seat here. Has a awesome aftermarket seat, honestly. Pretty nice for what it is. Here is a look at the serial tag. It's a 3022545310F. I knew it was a 310F. That's always a 310F when they have the controls here on the dash instead of the right hand control. We poked around in this back compartment here. It is ate up and chewed up. And I see like some chain links and stuff. So we're going to try to get this expandy foam out of here. I'm kind of wondering if they didn't have a can of expandy foam down in here. And then it exploded and possibly filled the whole compartment. Timo's dingy, digging in the ship out, shipping container to uh, help me pry this open here. We'll see what's what. Again, some kind of uh, redneck engineering here. I kind of love it because clearly the tank was garbage. Uh, and then they used this electrical box as a spare toolbox. I love it. I love it. The redneck engineering is just to die for on this. Clearly, she's old and crusty. This door, this entire battery box is honestly just gone, as you can see. Kind of interesting on that note. Operator's platform. Another thing that's interesting, this does not have a dipstick for the transmission level. I don't know about that. Probably you have to crawl underneath of it on a 310 app. and check a level plug. So that's kind of interesting. Don't see too much more of note on this side. This is the 148 gas, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's a 148, correct me if I'm wrong. I did notice that these were not welded yet. I do see a crack there, at least what I think is a crack right there, but it has not been repaired yet. That's interesting to me. The other side, I believe, is intact. Blade is what it is. The cutting edge is at least still bolted. Mine is welded solid. It's interesting to me. This, I think, is going to be coming off and going on my dozer. This is a factory brush guard for the radiator, done very, very nicely. Has the proper mounting bolts and everything. So I'm kind of thinking that will be going on mine because that's just a cool addition. I've never seen it before in person. This unit has quite a heavier duty bearing setup on the center pivot. As you can see, the blade is kind of tough. It's been well used. <clears throat> this was probably a uh, flip down root rake. People would build them. This is a four way blade. Got a big old hook here. We just chained it up solid because this girl's not going to run. This is going to be a parts machine. All things considered, she's just as tough, if not tougher, than the one that I already have. But we've got some tracks. We've got sprockets, idlers, lower rollers, carrier roller. Grousers are in decent shape. I did not see any loose grousers. That's kind of surprising. Here you can see we do not have any cracking on this cylinder bolster here. So that's interesting. Got the same cylinders mine had. Just interesting. Got the older carburetor, as you can see. Nothing really to write home about on this girl. I think that says 1800 hours on it. There's no way that's possible. This has way more than that because I believe my dozer said it was at 3,000 hours and I think mine was still working, but it's been a long time since I bought it. 
Um, and this shows way more wear on the, uh, on the, uh, bushings under here. They are, try to sneak you guys in. They are well, well worn. You can see that groove worn in them all the way down. Sprockets honestly don't look too bad. I've seen worse. Obviously they have wear. I'm not saying they're new, but it is what it is. This still has the uh, big sprocket guard on it which I find interesting. It's like it's welded in position, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think I'm feeling weld on there. Mine does not have this that I remember. Tim O has opened up the battery box. I don't know what this was all about. Yeah, we got our own chain. What's this? Got a wrench set. Got a wrench set. Big crescent wrench. Big crescent wrench. I love it. Now ready to rebuild the entire dozer. Got an old pair of pliers, a chain. So we didn't lose anything by sacrificing that chain. We got a free chain. I'll do a little bit more investigating in here. This is the hall from inside the toolbox, we'll call it have a sediment bowl, got some bolts, I assume, for the uh, sway bar back there, got a uh, fuel line here, hose clamps, rotor, a uh, crappy old screwdriver, top rad hose, crescent wrench, we're ready to rebuild the whole baby as long as we've got that, and uh, some drop forged, made in China, wrench set, you know, some pliers, we also got a uh, starting solenoid here and a bungee strap that is uh, factory new, factory butte right there. And we got a broken log chain. As you can see, they yanked on this, ripped it in half once, repinned it, and just kept on working. I love it. Here we have a look at the upper roller. Honestly, not too bad a shape. Mine was kind of sharp right here. I don't even feel a groove. Those might be nice. The front idler on this side is in pretty decent shape. It's got a little bit of sloughing here on this edge right here, that sharp edge. I call that sloughing. The rails are not in too bad a shape. I don't see them all the way up here into the pin boss, but they are what they are. They all seem to be tight. I have not found a loose grouser yet, which is kind of cool. Moving on. Draw bar looks to be in decent shape. I don't see too much wear there. The sway bar is in good shape. I just threw these bolts in so that it wouldn't sway while we shoved it up on the trailer. As you saw, this battery box is gone. <clears throat> this sprocket is in worse shape than the other side. You can see there. It still has this uh, sprocket guard intact, which I find quite interesting, honestly. Um, upper carrier roller. Feels pretty decent, honestly. Don't know. Yeah, those... Uh, <laughs> Those poor uh, bushings in there are over with. Looks like they've been wearing on the left as well, instead of in the middle. And then this front idler is quite sharp here compared to this side. So I don't know exactly what that really means, why they're wearing on the inside. Again, I'm not the dozer expert. I just really like these models. But all in all, I think it's there tired old pony. This would have been the nose profile coming at you in the field. Underneath the belly of the beast, I see more track tin in place here. And this here has some sloughing right there where she's kind of tired is what it is. We are going to crack this oil pan loose to see if there is water underneath the oil because there's no need of ruining a good engine if we can just crack this loose and drain it, so. 
we had to get a six-sided socket because the nut is almost rounded off. Oh, there she came. Okay. Let's get our socket off. I'm gonna scoot back a little bit. Get rid of this glove for dexterity. Oh. All right. <laughs> uh, I need that screwdriver, Timo, to poke up into it. It's been a minute since, where am I at here? It's been a minute since she's had an oil change. <laughs> she's not draining. We have the proper tool that came with the dozer to fix it. So what's in it? Oh. Oh my. Oh my. This is going to suck. Oh yeah. This is going to suck. Definitely water in there. Wait for it. Wait for yeah, it. That's all water. Oh, it's peeing on me. Oh, oh, it smells Get terrible. Out. It's terrible. <laughs> Why do we do this, Timo? Why? <laughs> it's it just keeps coming. <laughs> oh, I'm on the downhill side. This was not a good idea. Good enough. Like and subscribe. I am wearing the evidence of varnished gasoline and oil and water mixture. Yummy. Tastes good. A quick side note. I did get a reproduction, I believe, uh, case manual in really nice condition. And the lady that we met there she was very very nice she gave us three dozen farm fresh eggs which was just awesome she was a german iranian immigrant she married her uh, husband over in germany and moved over here with him so i thought that was just cool you never know who you're gonna meet and she was just the nicest lady very cool to talk to if you enjoyed this adventure please hit that like button subscribe if you're new we are all the time looking for good old machines like this to save. I believe this machine is going to be a parts machine, like I said many times. Like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you next time.